Good morning, this is Major Simpson. We're discussing decision making and problem solving today. Some of this is review. A lot of my cadets have seen this earlier, but review is good in this case. Think about the difference between problem solving and decision making. There is a difference, and we'll discuss that further. All right, you can pause here if you want to, to read through the entire thing. This is more of a thing that describes how you believe yourself to be. There's no right or wrong answer to this one. Once you're done reading and answering the question, go ahead and unpause the video. All right, student learning plan is next. These are the learning objectives. Pay particular attention to the seven step problem solving process. Think about behaviors that contribute or block efforts to solve a group problem. And look at these key terms down here. Contingencies, I know we have discussed. Cohesive, improving, influencing, intuitions, non-judgment, objectively, and operating are the other key terms. Do you measure the quality of a decision based on how it turns out, or with respect to how it is made, or both? Just because a desired outcome is achieved purely by chance, does this make for a good decision? As a decision maker, do you have control over the process or the outcome, or perhaps both? Select one of these scenarios and explain if the decision maker used good decision making skills or not. All right, one of the things I'm going to do is put this out in Google Classroom as a question for you to answer, sort of a check on learning. So we're going to ask which of these made good decisions and which of these did not, and you're going to put that in. All right, this is a double bubble map, which is used to, uh, we're going to compare and contrast between problem solving and decision making. I'll type a little bit in there for you. So problem solving decision making so what you would do here is somewhere in here you would put how they are alike and then out here you put how they are different you can pause and do that on your own and then just resume when you're ready to move on now we're going to define problem solving and decision making Why would people get confused about these two? Does a person who makes decision have to first solve problems? Or can a person who solves problems then go on ahead to make decisions? Or can they leave the decision making to someone else? And then which are you? Are you a problem solver? Are you a decision maker? Are you both? Now there's processes we have that involve decision making and problem solving. The Army's very good about that. They give us recipes for how to do things. Leadership is the process of influencing others by providing purpose, direction, and motivation while operating to accomplish the mission and improve the organization. Having a logical thought process helps ensure that you will not neglect key factors that could influence the problem and ultimately your decision. This seven-step process is an excellent tool that can guide you in solving problems and making those sound and timely decisions. The seven steps are identify the problem, gather information, develop courses of action, analyze and compare courses of action, make a decision, make a plan, and implement the plan. Identify the problem. 
Being able to accurately identify the nature of a problem is a crucial undertaking. Gather information. The amount of available time in a leadership situation can be a limiting factor on how much time a leader spends gathering information. Develop courses of action. With the problem identified and available information gathered, you are now ready to develop possible courses of action. Keep an open mind throughout the step and be prepared to anticipate change. Analyze and compare courses of action. Leaders should develop as many advantages and disadvantages for each course of action as possible. Make a decision. Your intuition is that aspect of your mind that tells you what feels right or wrong. Your intuition flows from your instincts and experience. However, never make the mistake of making decisions guided totally by emotions or intuitions and immediately doing what feels right. This is a prescription for disaster. Follow the problem-solving process as rationally and objectively as possible. A good decision is measured in terms of the process used to attain a desired result and not the actual outcome achieved. Just because a desired outcome is achieved by chance does not make it a good decision. Outcomes achieved by chance are often devoid of critical thought and responsible planning. Good decisions and outcomes need to pass the three R's test. The decision needs to be right, based on law, ethics, and morals. It needs to be reality-based, with evidence supporting it as a right thing to do. And it needs to be responsible in the context of social standards of right versus wrong. One cannot anticipate or control all the variables that may impact the decision once it is set in motion. Even though you know all there is to know about flipping a coin, you cannot control the number of revolutions it will take once it leaves your hand. While you cannot control the outcome of the decision, you can put the odds in your favor of getting what you want if you carefully and responsibly manage the decision-making process. Good decision-makers are effective in making responsible decisions when they set quality goals, have confidence in themselves, possess some of the necessary resources needed to start their journey toward a goal, surround themselves with people who can support and guide them on their pathway to success, and apply decide and plan strategies that will move them in the direction of their dreams and goals. Make a plan. Ensure that you specify the what, when, where, how, and why for all personnel or elements under your authority. Finally, include contingencies in your plan that address possible unexpected situations or actions. Develop these contingencies based on the assumptions made when you identified the problem and gathered available information. Implement the plan. After the decision and plan are made, it is time to act. In this final step, you must put the plan into action and then evaluate it to ensure that the desired results are being achieved. Evaluation is often a neglected step in the decision-making process. All right, there was a lot of information. Some of it you'll see in the check and knowledge, so make sure you paid attention to it. This is a flow chart that shows the seven steps. So what you do is here, you'll put in each one of the steps and then how it leads to the next step. Here's the reflection. Think about what's worked for you or not worked in the past. Think about what you've learned about the problem solving process. Some of this, again, is review. Some of this will be new. All right, here's some exercises. Normally, we break this down into teams. Again, that's going to be difficult to do here. And this is an interesting thing if you can put it together. And we may try to do this when we get back together.
Again, this is a slide based off of whether or not you learned anything from the activity. All right, we're always looking to build and enhance our skills. Remember, that doesn't stop until you permanently stop. So every day is a learning opportunity. All right, QBOL stands for Quarterbacks of Life. We're going to see some animation next. As a leader in JROTC, you're working with a team to reach a goal. You might encounter a problem or two. You'll need to make decisions. Consider using this decision-making model. The Quarterbacks of Life decide and plan decision-making process toward meeting a goal, team or personal. Let's say your goal is to bicycle across the United States from California to Washington, D.C. in 100 days or less. These decisions will provide you with the information you will need to develop your goal plan. Use the information from the decide phase to create your plan. Now this last part that we see looks similar to what we remember from our SMART goal, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Uh, here's another way to look at things. Is what the plan that you're putting together doable? Can it be observed? Can it be measured? Is it helpful? And then risk tolerable means is, is the risk too high or is it acceptable? All right, seven steps of problem solving are here. Some of you will recognize this from a more complex version of what I wrote on the board about worrying and how it does nothing for you and how if you make a plan and execute, it can replace worry. Here's the three steps of decision making. The first step. The second step, and the third step. Then here's a model of the decision making process. You can see how if we follow these processes for problem solving and decision making, they can help us eliminate worry or at least minimize it, even in tough times like this. Now we don't have a team, but this is a mind map. Here's an example of how a mind map works. Think about the techniques that you want to use for yourself to make this thing work. Now, some of you are already in this position. You're a leader who helps teams solve problems. I give you problems to solve. You sit down with your teams and you figure out the best way to solve those. Well, I've given you some tools to use in order to make that happen to facilitate success. All right, you have a case study that should show up in your text, but if it doesn't, I'll make that available to you. I'm going to have some questions in the check on knowledge to see if you read what you're supposed to read.
All right, this is a right or wrong answer. So pause, pick the correct answer, and then I'll select it to show you which one it was. Here's the correct answer. D, we gather information, make a decision, make a plan. Again, you can pause and read this. And there's the correct answer to find the objective, study the current situation, select the best course of action. Again, you can pause here while you read and select what you believe to be the correct answer. The answer is true. Subordinates are more likely to support a decision if they look, took part in developing it. Think about a time recently when you or your team could have used a good problem-solving decision-making process. Think about that. We all have these even if it's within our families. Think about your own personal goals. This is something we're supposed to be updating on the cadet portfolio anyway. Those may have shifted, by the way, especially with the current pandemic. Now, you could w worry about what's going to happen based off this pandemic, or you can use the decision-making problem-solving process to come up with a plan and execute and adjust. Stepping stones to self-assessment. That's what these are. All right, that ends this particular presentation. Normally we have a performance assessment task, which you see here. Parts of this I will integrate into the check on knowledge. And that ends this particular presentation.